Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, I decided since 4.25 is out for Unreal, uh, and a lot of people are getting more interested in learning how to use virtual textures and all that, uh, I thought I'd do a little video uh, on how to make a landscape with uh, 425 and to apply virtual textures to it and then how to sample those textures as well. So first things first, the modes panel, uh, it's no longer a window like it used to be, and I do have a little different layout, I apologize. Uh, but the mode is now a little button up here. Uh, for anyone that did not see my video on like the new changes with 425 or hasn't been following along with 425 in general. So first things first, we're gonna go to landscape. We can also hit shift two. If you see there, just list the shortcuts. First thing I'm gonna do is we're just gonna create a landscape, right? Uh, all this is right now is a blank project. There's nothing in it but what we're making right now, okay? So, prerequisite is not too high. All right, now from here, just to be ready for what we need to do later, I'm gonna go to place actors, and then we are going to look up uh, runtime virtual texture volume. And this is just to help us set it up now. Okay, so we're gonna go to uh, here. If you have a lot of objects, you can just hit this little button to pick actor from scene. You're going to hit that. That's now assigned to your landscape. We can copy the bounds and rotation. But what we're going to do is we're going to come over here. We're going to just make a new material. And I'm going to just make a super simple landscape material now. Uh, so first thing that I like to turn on use material attributes. Um, and then we are going to do a runtime uh, virtual texture output. Okay, now that we have that done, let's go and make a landscape layer. Okay, because now we got, need to start setting up that landscape, okay? Uh, I'm going to just make two layers, a grass layer and a dirt layer. Now, I sped this part of the video up because it was super slow and the video would have been like 40 minutes. But basically, I'm using a set material attribute just to set the base color and the roughness. Okay, you can come in here and basically this is what your landscape would be. This was just me doing it for an example, so it's really, really fast. I'm sorry. All right, now this is where the virtual texturing stuff comes in, okay? So not only are we going to sample the texture, but we're also going to then write to it. So what we're gonna need is we're going to need a virtual texture node, and that's what I'm adding here. And basically this is gonna tell it when it is a virtual texture, this is what it's doing, when it isn't. It's a weird thing, you can read more about it in the docs, okay? Uh, but this is just the basic setup right here. Okay, so now that this virtual texture is plugged in, it the virtual texture switch, I apologize, uh, I'm basically going to get a set attribute, or get attributes node, sorry, a get attributes node. And this is so that we can separate what we're feeding into the uh, virtual texture sample and, the, uh, and what goes into the node switch, right? So what we need to do is basically pair up both these things so the base color is the base color and all that and basically what this is is that's going to feed into the ren the virtual texture output oh no you're saying we have an error oh no what do we do okay now we're going to go back to that render volume that we made and we're just going to click on the create new uh virtual texture right and you can see from here uh we can basically set what type we need and right now we're just going to leave it on the default uh but later we're going to add a second one but that's for later there's some mip settings and some other stuff in here if you want to go in there and take a look okay from here we're going to add a runtime virtual texture sample and I'm gonna make it a parameter, which is a new feature with 425, uh, which basically means we can set it per level, per instance, all those things. Uh, from there, I'm just going to uh, set it up so that we can use it for the yes on that virtual texture, right? So I'm just getting a set material attributes uh, so that we can connect it because that uh, virtual texture switch needs a material attribute because that the other inputs a material attribute, right? Okay, so this is just boring. I'm just gonna speed through a lot of this pause it if you need to uh but for the most part there you go it's done right now we have a virtual texture okay we could finish right here obviously i'm compiling there's some other settings here if you want to output to height or something like that you would actually put it here so that anything that says hey let me sample the um landscape 
what what's the height right so that's what i'm doing here we're putting an absolute position and then just getting b so that we get that z uh, and we'll be using that later for uh, a second part of this little speed tutorial whatever you want to call it <laughs> All right, and now I had a little error, but uh, that's because nothing's assigned. And then we also needed to assign the virtual texture under the landscape. There's a section called virtual texture. You just say textures to write to and assign that. And there you go. It's all set up. Okay, now that that's all set up, let's take a look and let's make a object that actually samples from that virtual texture. I'm going to make a new material, but we're just going to place it on this cube. Okay. And then on the new material, all we're going to do is put down a runtime virtual texture sample and apply it with that virtual texture that we actually made of the landscape. And uh, I, you know, there's a, you got to worry about like some virtual texture sampling uh, lookups and things like that. But this is all we got to do. Say we want the base color, we plug in the base color. We want this, we plug that in. Okay, and we can use this more with more advanced lerps later, but here you go. There you go. It's all set up uh, And that box is now green because it's sampling that part of the mesh, right? And then we can actually move this around and you can see that it's sampling the terrain All right, and now kind of for part two. Uh, I sped some stuff and had to cut some stuff out, but nothing important. I We are going to make a secondary uh, virtual texture and I'm just gonna set it to height and then I made a virtual tech a second volume and I assign this material. And we're gonna do that bounds thing again. Now we add another sample. We're gonna sample it. We're gonna name it just height so we know it's height. And that's all we're gonna to apply to it is that second virtual texture sample, right? And now I wish there was a way, I wish they like made it where you could hide some stuff here so that it only shows height. But here we go. Now it's gonna, we're just gonna use that to actually sample it and see a little transition line. Here, I'm actually going to just copy and paste some basic stuff. Basically, we're going to divide by the absolute world position and do some subtraction there so that we get a nice gradient. Um, and then I like there's a spot in here that you guys can just pause to see what I'm doing. Um, but it's basically just we're taking that sample of how high the landscape's telling us to be, which we sampled earlier in the landscape material. Uh, and then I'm just telling it, hey, we're going to divide it by this. This is how much I want you to fill up this object with this. And then from here, uh, that's all I'll need. Okay, and here I'm just setting up some basic lerps. The zero is going to be the color of the terrain. One is whatever other color. I, ex I didn't really do this in detail because I know that, you know, people will have their own materials here. Uh, and then that just kind of shows you what a basic lerp would be. Okay, and now... Oh, and now I realize like, oh yeah, I need the material instance. Uh, and then I'm just setting that, that fill height up so that we can kind of see a difference. Okay, and now we're gonna take a look at what a finished material would look like from my own personal game. All right, to close out, this is using that same exact thing, except it's filled out. Uh, there are some UV issues, but those can be fixed up. Um, but it's nice and seamless rock. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm sorry that it's just like a rushed video but it would have been like an hour long and I didn't want to do that. Uh, if you want the project files, they will they are available to my patrons and my supporters on Twitch. Uh, I hope to be making some more videos on this and they won't be all as rushed as this one. So if you want to watch some more game dev slash Unreal Engine content, just hit that sub button and thanks for watching, guys. Have a good day.